Hey guys, it's Matt. Um, this is a new chapter I just started writing yesterday. I think it really needs to be inserted into the book. I'm only partially done it, and I'm actually going to ask for your help in finishing the chapter. I have 15 things about listed here that I'm going to do a reading now, but I need your help because I probably forgot 10 things. So in the comment section, if you think anything needs to be added to this list, or anything that I missed, please point that out. Now what is the list? I call it here comprehensive list of lists of mistakes in fake events that are really not mistakes at all, if that makes any sense. There are absurd elements inserted into the old fake events that are there for us to notice, are there for me and you, are not needed to carry out the story or not needed to carry out the script. For years we always thought they're mistakes and now I think most of us agree they're not mistakes. They don't make these kinds of mistakes. They're there to see who notices. And I do think I'm going to I need to list th this out in the book. I have many of them, but um I think I'll need your help in about 10 or so that I probably missed or entire events that I've missed. And also before you comment, um please let me deliver my list, but also let me define what should be on the list. Just because something is an absurd element, for example, in 9-11, something that's completely impossible, could never happen, makes no sense, it doesn't mean that that's all necessarily there for us to notice. It's an absurd element that may be necessary for the masses to believe an absurd story, if you know what I mean. So I'll get to that in, in a moment. Just some house cleaning before I get started. Um, Chuck P., again and again, if you have that list of fake events you maintain. If you could email me that, if you have it up to date with uh, what happened down under and what else has happened since I last saw that list. Uh, I guess you could put it in the comments, but but maybe you could email it to me. The email address is on the website and the website's in the link. Um, also, if you know, if, if I could use the list and just put it in the book, I think everybody would appreciate it. And, I mean, there you have events listed that I didn't even know existed, so Considering we know the nature of what we're dealing with, I'm sure you're right about all of them or most of them, even things I'm not even aware of. So, um, by the way, guys, that email address that references the Tea Party, I, I don't believe in that, obviously. It's just an old email address attached to this Google account. It proves to you I did believe in that stuff years and years ago. I was fooled like everyone else. Of course, there's, you know, there's not even a Republican and Democrat party. It's just puppets working for one system. I know that. I just don't want people to construe the email address the wrong way. It's old, but it's it's working for the channel. And one other bit of house cleaning. Um, you know what I'm kind of stuck on right now? This topic, they put certain elements into the story, mistakes, so we can see them, so we can potentially latch onto them. Then we can spread the hell. You know, I've been kind of focused or concentrated on this subject recently. How are we being used and played? What have they gotten us to notice? And then we take it and we spread it like a virus. And I'm going to be on this until I work this out for myself. But people have come forth and said, well, Matt, if you're doing their bidding, shut down the channel. And that's just, that's not really fair. And it, I don't think they've people have thought that through correctly. Because I've always said, you need to be able to see the fraud. That's step one, being able to see it. Now, once you see it, you can choose to move past it and say, I'm not going to feed it any longer. I'm not going to give it my time or energy or attention. And if that means for you moving away from channels like this, then I understand that. Why would anybody want to feed the system? But you understand, my role in this has always been so people can at least notice the fraud, see the fraud. That is a stepping stone. We've all been there. So the people that come to me and say, well, you're, you're, if you think you potentially are propagating the hell, shut the channel down. Well, that, that could leave thousands of people um, you know, missing, missing the boat because I, I think I'm, my role is helping those people see the basic fraud. And then hopefully they'll move on from there the way many of us are moving on. But that's not my role. It's not to cater to 10th level uh, truth or Jedis like yourself. That's, I'm not smart enough for that. My role is to be able to explain the fraud in a way where newer people coming in can can make sense of it. That's always been my role. So how would it help potentially thousands of people 
uh, that, that could come into this and, and, and have certain understandings about how the world really works if I just shut the channel down. Well, that would be, maybe that's what you need as a 10th level Jedi, but is that what this channel's for? I try to t- cater to 10th level Jedis whenever I can. And I'm not smart enough to do that in every video. So you understand why shutting the channel down would, would really potentially hurt a lot of people. You've got to be able to go through the muck. You've got to get dirty and muddy. You've got to see the fake events. Okay, there's a lot of negative there. I, I know that, and there's a, there's potentially feeding the system exactly what they want. But I guarantee they they don't want when we say, well, come on out of that. Now that you see the fraud, come on out and improve yourself. Come on out and not feed the system any more energy. No one's just going to jump to the tenth level without going through the first nine levels. That that's my role is the first. You know, I'm I'm an elementary school or a junior high teacher. That's what I am. All right, last section before the reading. Um, need to speak directly to Googlebot. <laughs> Here we go again. Uh, Googlebot, my theory, and the theory of, of several in this community, or many, is that you uh, and the minions you surround yourself with have laid some of these breadcrumbs for us to notice. So therefore, if I'm going to focus on those breadcrumbs that we think you've actually laid before us to notice, then there shouldn't be any chance this video should be blocked worldwide or anything like that right googlebot i mean i'm also going to claim fair use googlebot but also again you laid these breadcrumbs or or the people that uh you surround yourselves with um and i'm actually noticing them via this video so it should be exactly what you want if it's blocked worldwide maybe uh maybe folks i was wrong about them wanting us to notice these things but that's that's my appeal to you Googlebot. When I talk to Google, it's like Ricky Bobby the movie. When I talk to Googlebot, uh, I like the I like the baby version of Googlebot. And I like my Googlebot in a tuxedo T-shirt. You know, it says formality, but it also says I came here to party. Ricky Bobby. If you haven't seen it, you can think I'm nuts. All right, let me just start the reading. Comprehensive list of mistakes and fake events that are not really mistakes, if that makes any sense. And we know that the ancient intelligence here that many call the Lochnar is no dummy. For many, many years, we thought that the insertion of absurd elements into news events was just sloppy planning and mistakes and bad actors. Now, we are very confident now that these were not mistakes at all, and they were meant to get our attention. Yes, our attention. People like you and me, who can see certain things, even without the they-live glasses. Not meant for the people down the block or the people at work that don't see squat. Squat, the guy said in Point Break. Now, why would they actually want a certain group of us to notice? Now, that is discussed in detail later. But for now, the purpose here is to simply list out the mistakes that we thought were mistakes but aren't. They were there for us. These are the pissed on breadcrumbs. Pissed on but specifically there to piss us off. And all of us ate them up for years, and then we asked for seconds. And using the example of 9-11, I'm going to describe uh, what should make the list and really what shouldn't make the list. Every absurd element shouldn't make the list. Um, Some of the absurd elements are needed actually to fool the masses. So we must distinguish between the absurd or the impossible element meant for us, or at least that's my theory, and those that you know, because the stories are so absurd anyway, they're going to be riddled with absurd elements. We have to differentiate. And most things will not make this list as absurd or crazy or impossible as they are. So let's start with 9-11. One's easy. We have the inflated tire at the bottom of the World Trade Center. Come on. Put there for us. It's impossible. They don't need that as part of the story. It's not like with two buildings collapsing down and other buildings collapsing down later that they just needed to throw out the inflated tire out the back of the van or nobody would have believed it. All those two buildings that just came down, crumbled down, I'm talking like we're the masses. Those buildings that just crumbled down, well, I would have believed it, but there was no inflated tire on the ground, so I'm not believing it. See, it's, it's just not necessary. It's not necessary to put that into the story. So there's only one reason it was put there, to get us to notice it, latch on to it, make videos about it, and propagate it. 
Okay, we'll move more quickly now. One's the inflated tire. Two is the slightly singed terrorist passport um, that floated down gently to the bottom of the North Tower. That was meant for us, guys. The terrorist passport that was found in Shanksville. Yeah, there were more than one terrorist passport found that day. Most people don't realize that. Number four, Donald Rumsfeld running around the Pentagon lawn carrying stretchers. There's no reason that needs to be in the script. It was there for us, in my opinion. Okay, here's the key. There are hundreds of other absurd elements presented in the 9-11 story that will not make this list. For example, the 30-minute tight connection for Muhammad Atta to make Flight 11 from his propeller flight that was coming in from Maine and had just landed. I mean, that's an absurd element that would never happen if the story was real. Not going to even go to Maine and then have this tight little connection and run through the airport like OJ to make Flight 11. If it was, if your whole life and your whole existence in the afterlife and the 72 virgins and everything rested on what you needed to do on Flight 11, you probably would have just stayed in the airport hotel and uh, you know put the Do Not Disturb side on. You wouldn't have a tight connection. It's all absurd. But that's not going to make our list. That because it was needed. It, that was needed for the for the story itself. Not that not put there for us. See the difference. Although absurd, that part of the story was needed to describe why one bag was left behind, and one bag didn't make it onto the connecting flight. Conveniently, then the FBI found Muhammad Atta's bag that was left behind in Boston, and all the incriminating evidence that was inside was used then to cement the story. You know what was in there, like a copy of a Koran and a flight manual, and it's just absurd. Um, now, not that we should stray, but I just have to note some things here. Uh, did anybody ever consider these things about the bag that didn't make it onto Flight 911? If Otto was going to ram the plane into the side of the World Trade Center, why did he even have a check bag in the first place? You know, a check bag didn't make it from the propeller plane from Maine onto Flight 11 because it was such a tight time. Why would he even? Why are they even carrying any bags? I go, Matt. They need to carry bags to make it look legitimate. Fine. Then why'd they pack it with all sorts of ridiculous evidence? Why would the checked bag have a 767 flight manual? The checked bag. How could he reference uh, the flying manual if the bag was checked down underneath uh, with all the sedated animals? Why would Atta write some sort of final note about death and place it in the bag that was going to be meant for the side of the World Trade Center? If it's a final note about death, would he forget to mail it or something? It shouldn't have been on the bag. Or maybe maybe he assumed that all paper, uh, like passports, are just going to be impervious to 2,000-degree fireballs, and he thought the note would gently float down and somebody on the ground would would find it and read it. I, I, you know, it all this makes no sense. Is there anybody uh, actually suggesting to me right now that the bag was probably too big and he was forced to check it? He really intended to carry it on. What? Who's saying? There, I'm sure there's people that even are saying that. There's always people listening to this with the debunking mindset, the debunking idiot mindset that was programmed, programmed by the society from birth. Let's get out of the weeds. As stupid as all of this is, what I just talked about, Atta's bag, it was a mis- it was not a sorry, it was not a mistake, but rather it was placed into the plot on purpose. However. There are reasons why what I just mentioned isn't going to make our list. It wasn't put there for us. It was actually put there to reinforce the dumb story that was presented to the masses. So the point is, not every absurd element uh, is going to make this list. Very, very few were, because the stories are absurd anyway, but they are meant for for the masses, not for us. Either way, there are no mistakes. So to wrap up 9-11, things like George Bush sitting in front of an elementary school classroom for seven minutes after he was told uh, that America was under attack. And it wasn't just that seven-minute thing. It's not like he ran out of the elementary school after that. He, uh, they, they set up a podium and they brought children and teachers so they could stand behind President Bush as he gave some address to the nation. Well, weren't there supposed to be other planes in the air and his schedule was published? Why would he put the kids in danger? And Everybody get behind me for that perfect photo op as I address the nation. These things aren't going to make our list as dumb as they are because they were put there for the general 9-11 story, even though they're just as dumb. Um, even Harley Guy 
is not going to make our list. Not, he's not there for us, Harley Guy. Harley Guy just planted a seed to the millions watching. That uh, so I came out, you know, from having my breakfast, and I I saw the twin towers drop, and of course uh, it was because uh, the fire was just so intense, and uh, he it was as bizarre as that was, you know, people because of the nature of what was happening, nobody was analyzing or even thinking that this guy's some planted actor, and he just planted a seed, whether it be in the conscious mind or subconscious, planted a seed that the fire was just too intense, and that's what brought down the the buildings, and it was all completely normal the way they came down. So, so he's not going to make our list as absurd as that moron retard was in his presentation. He's not going to make our list. I just want to be clear because I don't. I would hope I'm asking for your help in this chapter. But I want to be crystal clear on what types of things, um, and don't be upset if I don't use you know what you. Uh, I probably will only end up, uh, up using a few of what people put in the comments. But nevertheless, I need your help here. And continuing the reading, let me get through all the events before you comment because I'm, I might be about to cover it. I would say really hold the comments back for this one, guys, please. And I'm going to try to clean up comments on this the best I can. The purpose is. You know, what did I miss? Not, Matt, check this link out, or something about something off-topic. I'm going to clean up comments for this video. Captain Hook. Am I allowed to talk about this, Googlebot? It's things you want us to notice. I would think so. Robbie's Parker. Comes out to a CNN podium with his shits and giggles. Um, It's a mistake placed there on purpose for us to notice. You know what's the point of him giving the speech in the first day, in the first place a day after? It's not needed for the masses to believe in what happened. You know, with hundreds of personnel swarming the area between the firehouse and the school, it's being covered all day long by CNN aerial helicopters. I mean, what part of the general population wouldn't think it's real just from the way the news is presenting it? What would they have to gain by sending out a horrible actor to a microphone the next day who comes out full of smiles? It just wasn't necessary. It wasn't needed. It's not like someone's going to say, well, I really would have believed in it. You know, somebody just sitting at a diner somewhere or a cafe. I would have believed in it, but, you know, some father didn't take a podium the next day with no signs of crying. And it just wasn't, it wasn't needed. So all they can do is lose in presenting it if it wasn't there for us. I mean, you know, Richard Nixon was kind of necessary in propagating whatever Watergate was. I'm sure that was all fake like everything else. But Nixon is necessary. See, he's necessary in that in that plot twist. Parker's not. They can only lose. So it's it's there. This was the original thing that tipped me off years ago where I looked at it and went, that's all on purpose. There's no mistake here. There's no us catching them in the act. Um, you know, it's all there for us. So, but that's all I've included for this, for the Captain Hook event. Um, I, the others don't qualify. I, you know, as retarded as Gene Rosen was and conflicting stories. I, no, I don't think it was there for us. That's the difference. Was there 800 other ridiculous elements uh, regarding, you know, Hook? Of course. Um, Maybe the Congo line, uh, Congo, Conga line. So last time I said that I got corrected, like that's really material to this presentation. The Conga line. Um, they, the kid was up front, then the next picture he's in the back. Why would they release those pictures? Did they make a mistake? I doubt it. Was it there for us? Maybe. So maybe, maybe I'll just right now type on the fly, add Conga line. But other than that, I don't think it was there for us. Um, so if you comment just listing other ridiculous elements about the hook event like why weren't life flight helicopters put into the air that's not going to make my list because it's not there for us although that's a good point why wouldn't they at least but then you remember when you send a life flight helicopter up into the air then you have more people involved you have more people in on it you know that they, they, this thing's going to have tentacles no matter where but they want the tentacles to be at a minimum so here we go um uh, the bang bang event in the state of VA. <sighs> you know, I've been through this a million times. I'll be extremely brief. I only have one thing here. The scholarship announced on the day of her death. After the five interviews, he announces there's a live scholarship. Uh, the gay man, Christopher Hearst, 
uh, who was masquerading as her boyfriend, uh, says the scholarship uh, is now live, same day. And, um, you know, obviously we've been over this ad nauseum for many, many years that there's no way you can establish a scholarship in under these set of circumstances in the same day. There's no point in having that in the story. You know, like what I, the same examples I've, I've been using, like somebody would say, well, I believe what I just saw in the news with that shooting, but because there was no scholarship established the same day, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to believe in it. It's not necessary. It's only put there when it's absolutely not necessary for the story to be believed by the masses then the, the element, you can only explain the element by, by saying then it was put there for us to notice, latch onto it, put the breadcrumb in our mouth, and then propagate it. We've got the uh, Florida event um, in the, uh, you know, the, the magical city of uh, Orlando. You have uh, basically what would seem to be retarded actors not knowing how many times they were, were shot. Um, you've got another retarded actor saying he was hit in the hand. Then he holds his hands up right to the camera, and there's nothing on his hands, and even a Band-Aid. Um, you've got carrying victims on the pictures in the video, carrying the victims right back towards the club. You can see the club in the background. They're just carrying the victims right back towards the club, where there's still supposedly a live hostage situation going on. Well, Matt, that's the, way, the direction to the hospital. Really? You get, they're going to carry them all the way down the hospital. They couldn't. All the all the cars rummaging around, police fire, you know, ambulances of which there were very there weren't actually any ambulances parked in front of that block. But that's another anomaly. That that's not the point here. But no, you you you'd, you'd think you're going to get a car or an ambulance, and you don't need to carry them right back towards the live event that's still going on. I'm putting that here. That's that's a ridiculous element. Um, that I believe was meant for us. Um, the whole story itself of the script could have been put there for us in this event. Uh, it is not possible for a mass shooting where 40 people are supposedly killed or, or injured in the first minute. That cannot turn into a hostage situation. It just blows my mind how nobody ever thinks this through. Maybe people in this community, but nobody around us has thought this through. I, this this subject fascinates me, and I say I could do two hours on it, but I'll just do a few minutes on it here. I mean, you know, if you think it through, oh my gosh, everybody being shot, mowed down, blood, guts, everywhere, bang, 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 you know, all this craziness, um, and then it turns into a two-hour hostage situation. Like, how did that, when you actually think about how did that go down, like actually role-play it right minute by minute, it, it it all breaks down so easily, but that's the people around us don't don't role play it like that. They just accept what the news tells them and they shake their head up and down to Anderson Cooper without thinking about anything. Like somebody in the police would have had to get a call from somebody saying, "Oh, he's got hostages back in the bathroom. He's willing to negotiate." Omar was his first name, and then Omar says, uh, "I'm not going to hurt anybody else. I've got hostages in the bathroom." So then, what did the police say? Um, withdraw the, uh, withdraw. Forget storming the place. Bring everybody back. Back off. He's got hostages. Where was the trust established? Um, don't you have to establish trust? I mean, aren't we always told from the moment we were born that or wouldn't any police officer agree the moment one ho- hostage is killed that they just storm the place because then all trust is broken? Isn't that what they told us in? Um, Inside man with Denzel Washington, um, well, one hostage killed, then you have to storm the place because he, did he did he establish trust by killing forty people in the first thirty seconds? Says, oh, he's not going to kill anybody else. How do you know? Well, he told me so. He's right on the phone here. He just said, "You want to talk to him?" He just told me so. Of course, we're not going to storm the place. So we'll do a two-hour hostage. It's just how come the people around us never just put that together? It's just it's so obvious that it's fake. Let's move on. We have the uh, out west. There's that gambling town. There was that event. Googlebot's laughing at me right now, going, I know everything you're talking about, you dumb son of a bitch. You know, obviously, I'm smarter than you are. My AI is smarter than you are, it's telling me right now. 
Um, whatever, you know, Googlebot. Like I said, you want us to focus on this, so leave me alone. Make sure this loads. I like my. I like to talk to a baby Googlebot in a tuxedo T-shirt. Um, all right, it was the it was the um, Out West gambling town, and you had um, Mike. Whatever. I'm so like walking on eggshells. I'd love to give everybody's name and Mike. Whatever you know, he talked about uh, my buddy. This is my buddy. Uh, you know, we heard it's all the same script. We heard what it sounded like firecrackers. It must have been firecrackers. Part of the show, 91 Harvest. 91 Harvest Festival. We're here to see Jason Aldean. Where are Jason Aldean? Uh, 91 Harvest Festival. And then, then we heard party poppers. and uh, sounded like fireworks. They all say that in every event. Going back to JFK, they use the same lines. sounded like fireworks. Um, but then my buddy here was hit, hit three times in the chest. And then we knew it was real. And then I knew it was real. All these people got hit all over the place in front of me. My head's flying, and head's rolling, and blood and guts. But my buddy, then he got it three times in the chest, and then we knew it was real. Well, that that's impossible. That was put there for us, guys. Because um, a bump stock the rifle, like it, a bump stock mimics fully automatic. It just sends the butt of the rifle like all over the place. Three bullets couldn't land in the same little cone. It's not possible. So, But see, the point is, why did they need that element? Why didn't they just say Mike's buddy got hit once? Then it's believable. But see, the three times, um, oh, they have to get their three code out there. Okay, they can get their three code out there in a lot of other ways, okay, which they did in this event. But if they're worried about being tipped off or not people not noticing, then they just, Mike says, my buddy got hit. How many times? Once. And then it's believable to most people. But if you say three times in the chest, it's it's impossible. It's not one percent. It's impossible. So it was put there for us to notice. Okay, you've got the I think on purpose mistakes with space and the ISS. I think of much of what happens in the way of glitches that we see on the ISS is totally done on purpose. If you just think it through, there's almost no other explanation. That doesn't mean all the channels that exposed it shouldn't have exposed it. Sure, they should have. And they did the the right thing, and they and, and they you know we all we all played our part, but we now we have to really understand, uh, see the big picture of how the, all the pieces are fitting together. Like on the on the ISS, we have multiple accounts of people who appear to be on wires. Okay, we'll return to that in a moment. In general, with space, we have Chinese astronauts, you know, blowing bubbles. We have a man's face in a shadow behind a model, <laughs> a model of the space shuttle deploying a satellite. Which kind of came out of the blue a few years ago, guy. I was like, guys, like, where was this? Again, I think this stuff's for us. We have objects being grabbed by astronauts that are not there. Guy reaching out in the air, there's nothing there, and he hands somebody something that's nothing, not there. Well, that's that's a glitch in a blue screen. I don't think they're stupid. Okay, I don't think they're stupid. Our attitude for years was like, oh, we really got them. No, we were really played, and we really just ate the pissed breadcrumb. Think about this, guys. Why would the recordings have to be live? You know, like if there was any potential blue screen going on with, like, like of course it is on, on ISS or other things, nothing would be live. Well, Matt, they have to talk to the elementary schools in real time. No, they don't. Nothing would be live. There's too much riding on a glitch. I mean, a real glitch. Not. I mean, you and I. Yeah, we we have. A, we're in tune to it. We believe they are on wires. So when somebody has a little wire pulled or whatever, we see it. But that's not. That's not enough for those around us that wear the veil. That's not enough. If they're standing on the ISS and all of a sudden, and if it was live and it went to green screen and it was the people were still moving and they, you know, they actually went. Oh, they we. They looked like they were caught and then they ran off the set. Or that would be enough to break through veils. Okay, so they can't afford that. The veils are, 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 are pretty amazing, but they're not, when it's that blatant, I would think it would break the, or crack the veil on the people around us. So they have two, they don't go live. They, they analyze it, I'm sure, meticulously what is going to be presented. The Loch Nahr, that green glow, folk, it's not stupid, okay? I mean, this stuff is so obvious now when we talk it through. And I'm sure a lot of you are shaking your head going, this makes perfect sense. Like, why didn't, why didn't we just think that through like three years ago? Because we wear veils too. We do. 
We are brainwashed too. We're mind controlled too. We wear veils too. I'm not trying to provide energy or so or give validity to it. I'm just I'm just saying acknowledge it and 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 just acknowledge it so you know that you know we don't see things clearly as well, and we need to work on getting rid of whatever little veils that we have left, but they're still there. So if one potential major glitch would reveal the entire ruse, they're never going to go live. The performance would be reviewed under a microscope. And um, what's there, the problems there, or the mistakes, or the wires, and the you know guys flying around in monkey suits, it's all for us. It's for us. Okay? It's for us to notice and, per- unfortunately, to probably propagate the hell. That's what I'm focused on right now and I need to see that through that that, I need to really understand what's going on there and I'm going to continue to talk about it until I do and then my last on my space list here is uh, the entire Elon Musk sports car sent into space was was pretty much an absurdity for us to or just to generally see how many people would notice like we immediately said that was ridiculous just to generally see how many people would would notice almost like a test of veils that was so absurd the elon musk sports car you know circling flying around supposed to be in a billion year orbit that was there it was like a test almost but you could say that's another one you could include on a list that was supposed to be there for us and um i know a lot of people would say matt you're giving these guys too much credit and they don't they know nobody's going to see it they don't care they're they're just sloppy i totally disagree okay you know look at the way like i've been over this recently the way washington dc is laid out somebody could talk for 20 minutes no no sorry 20 hours as to how every little bit of the way dc is laid out is is meant to correspond with astrology and esoteric uh, symbolism alchemical symbolism um, 20 hours easily. You could talk with somebody that really was in the know. They did and that, you know. But they're just they're sloppy. You know, they just they're just having fun with all that coding in DC. How everything lines up and no, they there's an it's a Lochnar type evil intelligence that's somewhere here, and it's not that ah, nobody will pay attention. Just if you show just show them the wires. We don't. Ah, the people are so stupid. And they're generally right to a degree that the people aren't going to see it because they know they wear the veils. But don't think that they're not... They're, they're just sloppy. Yeah, they don't, if there's a few mistakes, ah, go with it. Some of those truthers will notice, but nobody else will. No, they don't work like that, guys. And th- that type of thinking does not acknowledge that we've been played. Okay? Next event, there was that Charleston. This is an absolute reality breakdown for me to the nth degree. The Charleston uh, was a church bang event with, uh, of course, everybody's got three names. Dylan, Storm, Roof. Um, this is just, this is this is like my number one issue, guys, in terms of the, I don't understand how this works and why everybody didn't notice this. They arrest this guy, Dylan, Storm, Roof, for the church uh, shooting, um, the black church and he's taken into the a uh, first day, like a day or two after the event, or whatever, or maybe a week after the event. He's take he's in the courtroom for the first time, but it's via closed circuit TV. But you know, there are two guards. He's at the prison. He's but he it legally he's like he's in the courtroom. The judge can speak to him. Are you aware of your certain rights? Or I don't know what he said. And he could say yes. It was just like he's in the courtroom. So it doesn't matter if he was on closed circuit TV. The point is. On his first day in court, first 15 minutes in court, on the first day, they let the victim's family members, there were no victims, of course, but um, they let um, they let them, like, shout him down or speak to him. And they, they didn't really shout him down. They could have said, I damn your soul and all that stuff, but they, they chose to all forgive him. I forgive you. I forgive you. They all said, I for, all but one, I think, said, I forgive you. That's not even the point. That's not the reality breakdown. That's weird and impossible, but it, that's not even what I'm talking about. Uh, does anybody see a problem with family members or victims' families being able to talk to a person that hasn't even had a trial yet? There was no trial. There was no plead. How do you plead? Guilty. It was his first five minutes in court almost. 
Go look at it. Go look at the arraignment or something. Dylan Storm Ruth arraignment is like this weird, creepy, he's on this blue, bluish like haze, uh, closed circuit TV. Y- you can't. If the Matrix has rules and we're told, well, there needs to be a, a plea or a trial before victims would be allowed, families would be allowed to speak or shout down the the perpetrator. None of that happened, and there's probably somebody screaming at this video right now, going, "Well, you, he confessed, Matt. Really? You have no. <laughs> I understand the Matrix is supposed to have rules, and these rules are breaking down on us weekly. But that doesn't, you know, if anything is at all still real, um, that doesn't. He confessed. Well, so what? It does. That's not the way courtrooms are supposed to work. You you would absolutely need a conviction. You ever hear of that? Is that new to anybody? A, con- a conviction before family members can be brought in to shout down the perp? I, I mean, like, I want to say, doesn't he have any rights? But I- I'm well aware the system doesn't operate that way anymore. The Constitution doesn't exist. I know all that. But still, the, the, the scary thing about it is, you know, we're told the Matrix has rules. And what's really strange is that the, the rules of the Matrix, the way they're supposed to operator completely breaking down now what's what i didn't even talk about which bothers me the most is of any judge in the country a judge from vermont a judge from california police officers from georgia a, a cop in chicago all these types of people lawyers how many of them are there all these people um watch this on tv where were they why weren't they screaming up and down that um, am I missing something here? Um, well, family members can't shout down a perpetrator in the first five minutes of the first court. Uh, well, Matt, you must be mistaking. It wasn't the first court appearance. Yes, it was. He had already pleaded. No, he didn't. There was there was no trial. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know why this wasn't a bigger reality breakdown topic across the board. And I really would like someone to tell me um, that I'm just completely missing something on this um, before I move on because this one has always bothered me. Um, how the hell did that just happen? Let's go to another one. There was an airport uh, bombing in Brussels, and um, that creepy Vla- CBSN reporter, I think his name is Vlad, Vladimir, or whatever. He's always he's like the Anderson Cooper of CBS. He's always involved in the in the fake events. What a monster he is. He stands outside the hospital in Brussels. And uh, injured was a 30-year-old uh, Serge uh, Bellin, ex-basketball player. And Vlad says, so I asked him, uh, so I say, you've been shot. What was going through your mind, blah, blah, blah. And I went, shot? It was a bombing. There was no shooter. So anyway, I think that maybe, you know, hey, reports can be wrong. Reporters sometimes make mistakes. Although they never, they never make mistakes like this. Again, it's all on purpose. He goes inside to Bellin's bedside, and he's interviewing him. And uh, Bellin, the basketball player, says, "From the uh, bomb and from the gunshot, I, I, I'm just glad I made it. It's just amazing I made it." So he <laughs> confirms he was shot. But see, here's the problem: there was no shooter. No, I'm sure, guys. Okay, I made a video on this when it happened. It went viral. There was no shooter. Um, it was a bombing in the airport and on a subway. There was no shooter. And again, for years we explained it away like these these actors are so stupid. You know, they're not the no. And even if he was that stupid, they, it would have never been. It would have never made the airway. It would have never been released if it was a mistake. It's there on purpose. And I know many people listening to this will not believe that. But I'm... I, I just want to say 100% convinced. I might be wrong about what were, which one of these elements were placed on purpose. But are elements placed on purpose for us to notice things that are almost impossible? Yeah, I'm sure of it. It's ignorant to say 100%, so I'll just take it to 99%. But... If you're not seeing it, um, then you really you need to do a little bit of, of work to, to to really think this through. Um, that old they just you know that maybe who knows what thoughts are our own? Do we control all our thoughts? That thought pops up, and many many people listening to this they'll say, 
Matt, they know nobody's going to notice. They don't care. They're sloppy. This guy, this crisis, uh, what you know, uh, the catastrophe, Thesbian uh, Bellin, he just dumb, big dummy basketball player. You like Red Fox? You big dummy. He's a big dummy basketball player. He just got his. He was said to you know he 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 got it wrong. He said pretend you were uh, in a bombing and you know and then he forgot and said oh, I was shot. No, no, no. Okay, they're not the evil intelligence that's planned everything out for how who knows how long. You know, back through Watergate, back through JFK, back through the Civil War, back through time itself. It's not stupid. And even if it gets stupid people sometimes to do its bidding, then it would be pretty sure it's what goes out is what it wants to go out. That Lochnar, whatever Jared Kushner rub, rubs elbows with, I'm sh- let me tell you, think about it. Let it bounce off your inner tuning for it. You think it's stupid what put this construct together? This sick... In, it, in its own, from its own perspective, beautiful construct from its perspective that just feeds it energy, attention, uh, seven deadly sins, everybody ch- trying to keep up with the Joneses, chasing everything in life that's not important, um, the, the symbols on the back of the dollar bill, the endless symbology and the, the layout of D.C., how it coordinates with other uh, independent city-states like the Vatican, the city of London, the city of London, not London. You think it's stupid? It ain't stupid. Think about it. Before you say, ah, they don't care. And it's just these dumb actors. No, that's that's people that, that haven't thought it through. No way. Keep underestimating it. I'm not gonna underestimate it. I'm gonna I'm so much so I'm not gonna underestimate it. I'm gonna think that I potentially am being used by it more than anybody else. The lawyer down the road that makes a three hundred thousand dollars and just chases um, chases the, the Cadillac Escalades and uh, goes with the hookers and just you know just somebody in the, in, the, in absolutely involved in the matrix ambulance chasing lawyers. No, I'm going to assume that potentially it's using me more than it's using that creature. And I'm going to be I'm going to be aware of it and I'm going to find out and, and change my ways. Okay, that that's 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 the 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 evil genius of the system. All right, let's talk about Charlie Hebdo. Now, the gunman, Charlie Hebdo, the Paris uh, magazine, with the um, insulting Islam pictures, of course, all part of the script. I'm not saying the magazine didn't exist, it doesn't have a whole history, but it's, it's, that magazine was playing a role. Um, not just a role in, this, in the, in the, in the uh, shooting event, but a role for to create tension between Islam, to create tension between the West and Muslims. It's playing its role through uh, obscene cartoons re- regarding the Prophet. Absolutely just part of the script. But the gunman drops his driver's license. Yep, yeah, sure. While well, getting out of the car to go fake kill some reporters. Uh, just, just drops his driver's license while getting out of the car. Just ask you, how many times have you dropped your driver's license when you got out of a car for any reason to go into a store and you know buy a, a six pack of coke or to get to go, go into uh, you know the DMV? Uh, well, it wouldn't be good to drop your driver's license before going to the motor vehicles place. But how many times have you done it? Never. Yeah, I've never done it either. Just happens to conveniently drop his driver's license, so they know immediately who the perps are and they know who the terrorists are. It's so absurd that I can only imagine with that Charlie Hebdo event, uh, it was meant for us. Last one on my list is that, remember that Bataclan nightclub? It was in Paris, too. I love to pull this shit in Paris. Um, Eagles of Death Metal. Like, it was like, during the time, like, what is this band? I never heard of this band, Eagles of Death Metal. It's probably, the band, they, they do things so in advance, the band itself was probably constructed for this very event. Seriously probably constructed back to the 90s for this very event. They plan it that far in advance. So they're on stage, you know, when, it's the same repeating theme over and over again, and the eagles of death metal, their gunshots ring out during the Bataclan, and there was also, I believe there was um, a cafe 
that was shot up. And I don't know what part um, of that was meant for us, but maybe the whole thing was because it was that dumb and that absurd. People climbing out the back windows. I, you know, if you, it, we, we, we at the time broke down the cafe being shot up, and it just was, it was like absurd. I mean, people crawling around on the floor, but like one guy, you know, like, it looked like he was more concerned with glass fragments getting into his plate of food than ducking for cover. I mean, it's a joke. Now, guys, what was that other event where I think this was meant for us, but I forgot the event. Um, remember when the reporters, uh, it was somewhere out west in the United States, the reporters went through that guy's apartment? Was it, um, I think it was the case where there was the the uh, Islamic uh, the Islamic guy and his wife and um, Cooper, not Cupertino, California. Um, what's the name? Of, I think it was that that California town, San Bernardino. I think it was. Yeah, it's all. I was so deep into this crap. It all. It's all hiding somewhere in in my mind for me to call it forth. Yeah, San Bernardino. I think it was. And wasn't that the one where the uh, all these like army of reporters are waiting outside their apartment? And the landlord opens the door, and all of the camera crews from ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, you know, uh, CNBC, MSNBC, uh, Fox. They, I mean, literally, there was like thirty to forty reporters rummaging through the stuff in the apartment. Oh, what's this? And they say, Oh, he left a license here. Oh, what's this? Here's the toys for the kids, uh, and they're just rummaging through clothing. And and this is just a few days after the event, and people explained it away like. Well, the police already were in there. They got all the evidence they needed. Really, if it oh, if it was if it was real terrorism in the United States, they're not going to go back three times. If it was if anything was real, go back over it three times to maybe there's a little bit of a fingerprint we missed, or the, all the stuff is piled up and all the all the um, the computer was still there. Well, Matt, they would have taken the hard drive. They wouldn't have let reporters into that place for months, months. And there's 34, the reporters are going in the closet. The camera guy from Fox News is banging into the camera guy from ABC. And they're all on top of each other. It was, and I, I just looked at it. This is like some sort of reality breakdown. This can't happen if anything was real. They're picking up, oh, here's a filing cabinet. What have we found here? I found some things here. I'm an ABC News reporter. I found some things here that the FBI overlooked. They wouldn't have been able to go through all that crap and dust everything for fingerprints. And it was just if it was just a few days after the event. I mean, t- real terrorists shooting up real U.S. citizens? You don't think that every agency of the of the U.S. government, if it was real, would have been involved? If they, would have been, they wouldn't have let anybody into that place, ever. Why would anybody ever be allowed in? Somebody might say, well, we might need to go in there for whatever reasons. There might be a new technology on how we dust for prints in a year. Absolutely, the press can't go in and taint everything. It's absurd, but people just watch it on the news, reporters bumping into each other. I think it was San Bernardino. And uh, what did I miss, guys? What did I miss? Because I want to, you know, I want to make sure if I put this thing down in print, and, and there's three or four other things that really, mistakes that were meant for us, um, then they need to go into this list. And, and uh, collectively, the people here... Uh, can get it done. So thanks for helping me out with the comments, guys. Bye.